Let's go down to the next panel. There are some letters that appear to be similar in form. For example, I'm pointing to, yeah, you got it. Go ahead, just shout the answers out. It's a bet. And right next to it is a cough. And we might have to zoom in here to see the difference. The difference is this little squared section here in the corner, whereas the cuff is rounded over here. So that takes some training to differentiate between these two forms. Let's move on. You have, of course, the vet, which is just like the bet without the dot, and the chaf, which is just like the cuff without the dot. So that's the same similarity over there. The next one is the dalid and the resh. And it's the same concept that the dollar is squared over here exactly where I'm pointing in that corner. Okay, it hangs a little bit over if you look carefully. And the resh is nice and rounded over here. Okay, and that's a big difference between a d and a r sound, a d or a r sound. Then we have over here the hay, and that is of course similar to the chet. The difference, of course, is the opening that allows for some air to pass through, and the chet, which has no opening, causes this ch sound when pronounced, because the air is closed off. And then the tav is very similar to the chet, but it has a toe. Tav has a toe. So here we have, I'm pointing to similar shape, different letters. Oops, we have a few more. Look over here where I am. Yes, we have the mem sofit. And we have the samech. And the difference is the rounded, roundedness over here, where I'm pointing, and the squareness over here. One is a circle and one is a square. Very similar, though. And the next one is the ayin, which is kind of pronounced in the back of the throat by Sephardic speakers. Ayin. And the sadi. Okay, the ayin, the, the vertex, the V, comes down lower to the bottom of the line, whereas in the tzadi, it's kind of in the middle of the line right there. Let's move down to the next panel. There, are some, there is some repetition of sounds. For example, the vav, just like its name, is a v, v sound, and the vet, just like its name, is also a V sound. So there's two ways of making a V sound. Moving to the left, Yes, Hebrew is read from right to left. That's why I'm going this way. We have the chet. Okay. It doesn't look much like the chaf, but it has that same kind of, sort of guttural sound, a tiger growl. The chet is a stronger growl, and the chaf is a softer. Moving to the left, we have the, no, not me. We need the, we need the chart. I, I know I'm handsome, but not that handsome. Okay. We <laughs> have the sin, all uh, right, and then the samech. They're both making an S sound. Okay, moving down to the next row, we have the, the kuf, and then we have the kaf. They're both making a K or a hard C sound. And then we have the tab, which we spoke about, and the tet. And they both are identical in sound. They both make the T sound. And that's why this section is called same sound, different letters. Same sound, different letters. And that concludes the observations that I want to share with you about the letters themselves. And now I want to go to the left over here to the vowels. Thank you, Bonnie. These vowels, this word vowels, in Hebrew is called tenuot. Try to say it, tenuot. And if we could get a little closer to that so they could see that word. Tenuot. And tenuot means movement or movements. And uh, if you think about it, uh, letters don't really have any movement. They're just um, like percussive sounds like b, d, g, m. They don't have any sound. They need a vowel like a ma, da. So the a creates the movement and allows these things to not just be percussion sounds, but to actually um, uh, sustain a, a sound. A, ba, ma, ma, da, da, like that. Okay, so now we get into the vowels, back to the charts. And we have two ways of uh, 
making an ah as in father. Ah, father. Just like I'm pronouncing. Ah. Pronounce at home. Father. Ah. And there's two symbols. These appear below letters. And uh, they both are identical as far as modern Hebrew goes. Let's move to the left to the next A sound. And you have the two dots, the snake eyes. Um, yes, like the word snake or eight. Yes, the hard A. That's what these two points represent, written side by side. And the letter would be on top of it. Next, we have the three dots, two on top, one below. And that is also uh, that's an E sound, and uh, the soft E as in envelope. Envelope. Do you see my envelope there? Envelope there. And now we got my envelope. That I'm pointing to. That's that kind of an E. Eh, 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 like elephant. Envelope. Entebbe. Okay. Next, one dot. Okay. Let's see that my one dot. Do you see? It? Yes. My one dot, and that's also an E sound, but a hard E. And that would be like as an eat, okay? Or peat, neat. All right? Next, we have two ways of making an oo sound. You could do three dots on the side. That would be oo, as in loop. Or you could take a vav, and vav is a chameleon letter. It can be used either as a letter, a V sound, or it can be used as a vowel. And here it's being used as a vowel for the OO sound. So there's two ways of making the OO sound. Okay, follow me to the bottom. For example, OO as in loop. Okay, fruit. Let's go to the next column. We have again a vowel being used as a vowel. And the dot this time is not in the middle, but on top. And that will create an O sound, like oats. And you can also just put a dot on top of any letter, like the bet is just an example. And that would be an O sound. And w together with the B and the dot on top would be bow, bow. The B sound plus the O vowel, bow. And so we have two ways of making the O sound, O like in oats, boats, okay? And then our other, our one chameleon vowel, we have one chameleon letter, which is the vav, and we have one chameleon vowel, and this is called a schwa, that's the name of the vowel, and it is uh, most of the time silent, and uh, on certain times, for example, in the beginning of a word, it is sounded, and it's a short E. Okay, follow with me. A short E sound. But what kind of E? Uh, like a half vowel, hallelujah. I always like to call it the mamma mia vowel. And that is a quick review of the alphabet here on our third lesson in Hebrew. Now, we're going to pick up the ball and run with it and start reading right away. So follow with me as I go, go to this next chart behind me. Okay, Bonnie's right on it. So here we have our top row. Yes, yes. So here's a whole uh, row of Aleph. And I've put these vowels underneath, so now you can see how it works. So that's the letter Aleph. It happens to be a silent letter. It has no sound. And therefore, the only sound that it makes is the sound of its vowel. So this would be ah. Okay, ah. I'm going to read it across. I think by this point in time, if you follow the first two lessons, you should be able to do it with me. Try it at home. Eh. E. A. Okay. Got a dot on top. So that would be O. Okay, another way of making an O, using the vowel, O, U, E, O. 